Hello, it's Pete's Cam's man and Jack from Bram, and we are doing a very early morning tour at the minute this morning. It is 5.30, and Jack is going to show us what they've been up to uh, since Christmas. So, what have we got here then, Jack? So, prior to Christmas, um, we started fencing off the station car park, uh, so we mobilised the ramp to the top end of the car park, so members of the public who are disabled yeah. got access onto the platforms, just because we took out the old ramp which used to be on the right-hand side of us. Yeah. Um, we've erected all the, the kind of barriers that you can see through the car park now. The car park it has been closed over a couple of weekends before Christmas and a couple of weekends after Christmas just because we were lifting the piling rig over the opposite side of the platform, yeah. which you can have a look at in a moment. Okay. Um, the machine that you can see in front of us now is the 14 tonne uh, rubber duck, the wheeled excavator. So that can travel road, that's a road legal excavator, it can go on the road and travel between the compounds. Okay. Um, so we're using it to mob and demob compounds because we're moving our main offices from Dawlish Warren up to Timmouth Road in okay. the next kind of month or two as well. Oh wow. Um, and then the guys have been working over Christmas and on the run up to Christmas on the landward side piles. So there's eight piles on each side. Um, and this, this is for the lift and bridge, isn't it? This is for the lift bridge, yeah. So the eight piles are the foundation for the lift bridge towers, where the lift, where the lift u the units will actually sit on. Yeah. And then once the once the piles have been installed, we break them back down, and, and like we'd done with the, the pile caps that were down on the seawall, um, we cast the pile cap together to join all the piles together, and then the lift shaft sections sit on top of that then. I think there's about six sections to sit on top of the actual pile cap okay. constructed. So the guys have been working, um, installing the piles over Christmas. Uh, we did plan to do four piles on this side prior to Christmas, but when we started to install the first pile, we had some issues with the ground conditions that weren't what we were expecting, no. basically. So rock level was a lot lower than what we anticipated here. Okay. So if I just take you down, on the, on the left-hand side of here, you can see the, the casings which we've been using. So what we had to do um, is case further down into the ground. Yeah. So we had to order more casings just before Christmas. They arrived just before Christmas to allow us to do the piling works during the, the, the abnormal at the Christmas blockade. That's right, because you guys were busy all over Christmas, weren't you? Yes, yeah. So at, at the moment, we've pretty much stood right, right where the old ramp used to be. Um, yeah. The old ramp used to come up here and then you used to go straight out onto the platforms here. Yeah. And you can see the four piles that the, the guys have installed over Christmas. And then there's also four piles which we've broken back down, which are sat underneath the rig. So tonight, um, the operatives have been working on installing that pile there, the one, the one which is sticking up at the moment. The big one, yeah. The casing that you can see there is, is, is sacrificial, basically. It's just a permanent sacrificial casing that's needed because we're piling through a very loose granular material right. for the first seven or eight metres. So what we've been doing is casing down to about probably about 10 metres, and then we install a reinforcement cage inside of the casing and then concrete the pile back up to the, the, the design height. Right, okay. So all these piles get broken back down, probably about a metre and a half, maybe maybe a metre and a half to two metres. Um, all the casings get, get burnt off again, and then we cast a big reinforced pile cap to join all of these units together. And then where, where I'm stood now, we'll basically be stood inside the lift, lift shaft tower. Oh, okay, right as there. It goes up there, yeah. So the lift, the lift shaft tower is going to be here, and the, op, uh, and the, so on the opposite side of the track, which I'll go and look at the, the guys doing the work at the moment. Okay. The rig that you can see here, it's a lorry yeah. mounted piling rig. Oh, right. Um, I didn't even notice. So, so it can drive itself to site. Oh, um, wow. Yeah. And then it just slews round on the back and the, ar the, the arm that you can see in the air there, that, that just pops up. Ah, oh, still Vanel. okay, yeah. Still Vanel. yeah. So it's all, all, all the piling works have been done by um, Vanel on, on this phase, apart from the main piling works for the way, which for the way the walk, yeah. walk here, yeah. yeah. So, the reinforcement cages that you can see over there. Yeah. We've got one one last pile to install on this side and then we're done. Um, on the opposite side, we've installed the seventh out of, um, the seven out of eight piles now after tonight. Okay. And we've got one left to do, which we can do midweek now. So we're planning on finishing that probably by about Wednesday. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'll take you around, have a look, kind of a look. So for this side, it's fairly easy with a, with a concrete supply. The concrete wagons can just basically reverse straight up to where the pile location is yeah. and pour straight into the tremie pipe. A tremie pipe is basically a concrete a concrete line which goes all the way down to the bottom of the pile. Because what we don't want to... If you were to pour the concrete straight into the pile, you would end up with aggregate separation Yeah. as the, as the concrete drops and falls from a very high height. Yeah, yeah, okay. So we pour it into like a funnel at the top of a pipe and then the, it, it, it basically 
um, feeds itself down 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 like the funnel then. Okay. As, as such, and it's, it's called a tremie pipe. <coughs> Over the opposite side, um, we've, we're still pumping concrete from the station car park. Um, so we are we are working in a possession at the moment. Right. So the railway lines are closed. We have what's called a cos. Um, He's just off with one of our engineers doing some surveys. I actually knows over there on the platforms. Okay. So the cars basically is signs in with the engineer and supervisor. Yeah. And it allows us to work on the track or adjacent to the track. The piles that we're installing on either side tonight, they're within what's called the ALO, so any line open. Yeah. If you're within five meters of any line open during the daytime, you have to be in. A, you, ha you have to do the work within a possession if you're within okay. five meters with plant. So obviously we've got the 14 ton excavator over there and we've got the piling rig and we're installing piles basically where the guys just coming up through the platform and okay there at the moment. so th this this ha work has to be done in possession does it yeah right yeah, okay yeah it's I just it's just purely from a safety of the line point of view and because the piles are also so close to the platform as well yeah when the masts are both up in the air and they're, they're spinning the or the, when they're auger in the material well, when they're retracting the auger yeah and they're spinning the material off there is a residual risk that some of the material may fall, fall yeah. slightly off the organic, possibly could fall onto the platform. And obviously, okay. if there's members of the public or yeah, yeah. or users of the, the, the train services coming off the off different trains coming into the platform, there is potential for material to fall onto. So okay. we, we, we can't do it during the day. Yeah, fair enough. So we'll go around. So when we do do the um, footbridge install, the tarmac will basically come out, get cut basically underneath the canopy here. All of that tarmac will be removed in there, and then once the footbridge is installed, hi nice rug. And then once the footbridge is installed, all the new tarmac will be levelled in and around the, around the, the, the footbridge and the, the new stairs coming right, down. Right, okay. okay. So yeah, the guys have been, the guys have been working with the, the Clem 709 tonight. Yeah. Um, they've installed one pile on the seaward side. Yeah. And the, the casing that you can see here on the left hand side, that's the last casing. Um, to drive down to depth yeah. and the last pile to install. So what we did over Christmas, we, we were planning on undertaking it the weekend before Christmas, but the possession got cancelled on us. Right, okay. So we turned up and we mobilised with the crane to lift the piling rig over. We mobilised all the casings and on the Saturday night, just as we were taking the briefing, the possession was cancelled on us. Oh no! It was, it was, I think it was to do with strikes. Okay. Um, I, I believe in there not being the, 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 signal, uh, uh, the signal box to allow them right, okay. uh, the pie cop, which is the person in charge of possession, right. to take the possession. Okay. So yeah, it's a bit of a bit, bit of a nightmare. disaster for us. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so we had to, a, a very short notice, obviously the weekend before Christmas. Yeah, no worries. So obviously the, the weekend before Christmas, we weren't anticipating bringing a 200 ton crane in over Christmas. No. So the first eight hours of our possession at Christmas, we, we spent lifting the pile and we go over and lifting the casings in. Right, okay. So if you remember, we had the, the black sleeves cast into this, this kind of pitted yes. area that you can see here. Yeah, so this was, yeah, this was where you were digging before, This is basically underneath where the rig is, that's where, that's where we were digging before. Wow. Um, so it's all, all been filled back up. Underneath the, the timber mats, you can see that the rig sat on at the moment. Yeah. That's where those polystyrene blocks are that I was talking about during oh, the last Oh, OK, last I'm with you now. All, did, yeah. all makes sense. Um, and then these are the last three piles, because what we've done is we've worked our way in, yeah. cut the piles off so we're level with the piling platform so the rig can track over the top of them then. OK. So these two piles have been done. That was the one that was poured tonight in front of us. Yeah. And then the casing on the right-hand side there, that's the last one to do. OK. The, these casings, when they were lifted in, they were lifted in in nine metre lengths, so they were they were delivered up to Timber Road, yeah. brought down on the tractor and trailer. They were lifted over with a 200 ton crane vertically and just dropped straight into the black holes that we created <laughs> all the way down. And that, that, that one there just goes nine metres from the top straight the way down to the, the void which we formed at the bottom of the pile. And then what, what happens, the rig orientates itself onto the top of the pile, yeah. drives the casing further down into the rock and then we get kind of a, a seal at the bottom and then it allows us to open bore to right, the okay. depth. So the total total length of these piles, once they're fully augured from top of piling platform level, is about 18 metres. <laughs> um, and then these get broken back down about two two metres again then. That's amazing. So the, the, the black rubber tubing that you can see there yeah. the, attached to the rig, that's where the concrete gets pumped into. Okay. The concrete then goes up through the lines on the top of the rig and then down through the, 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 the centre of the rig into the pile then, um, when it is attached onto one, obviously. Yeah. 
So ne we've got next week. Uh, uh, sorry, we'll, we'll finish that pile on the right hand side by Wednesday, yeah. and then towards the back end of the week, then we'll start getting rid of the piling platform and breaking the piles back down to the required level. Yeah. So the next time you come back, we'll be back in a pit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll have a little. We can have a little wonder down onto the wall now. Okay. Probably the first time you've seen the wall at night, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think it is. Right, so we're just at the top of section B. Um, as you can see, quite a lot of work's been going on up here since our last tour. Yeah. Um, the guys have been finishing off the surfacing, up in, to tie into the platforms, and then in the gap on the right hand side that you can see there, there's a floodgate to go in. Yeah. The same as the gate, which is at the other end of the, the platform. Yeah. To allow people to come in and out. And in the event of a severe storm, a one in 100 year storm event, to allow the floodgate to be locked to prevent okay. as much water as possible going onto the track as possible. So the gap that you can see in here, um, there's going to be a new seating area in, in this section. Okay. So like the um, like the old claim wall sections that we've got down at Coast Guards. Yeah. That, that will run through here, roughly down to roughly down to where I'm stood now. At okay. This sort of line. The guys have been installing the granite sets in the, the two areas which you can see in front of us here. So this bay is pink granite, um, and then this bay that I'm stood above it that here at the moment is grey. You yeah. can't really see it that, that well in the dark, to be honest with you. I can see that still. And then we've been doing quite a lot of work with the link bridge. Oh yeah, concrete, concrete's coming on. So the link bridge has now had all the wire strands installed. Oh yeah. Um, so all the all the blue straps have come out. And the only thing left to do on the link bridge itself now is just clean off the, the timber rail at the top where we've yeah. been where we've been kind of just undertaking the work throughout here. And the last thing we've got to left to do is to form the drainage channel on the left hand side here. Yeah. So you can see the gap in the uh, in the basin. We've got, we've got a bit of a bit of a chop tonight. The gap where the water yeah. is coming through at the moment. We're at high tide at the minute, by the looks of it. Yeah, pretty much bang on high tide right now. So that the, on um, on Tuesday, Tuesday is the day where all the plant gets removed from the beach. Okay. Um, so as of Tuesday, we bring in a 50-ton excavator. The yeah. reason why we need to bring the 50-ton excavator in first is because we need to take the counterweight off the 70-ton. Right. If you remember when yes. we mobilised the plant, the, the barge that we use has a 50-ton weight capacity. And the 20 ton doesn't have enough lifting capacity okay. to, to um, take the counterweight off the back wow. of the 70. <laughs> so we have to mobilise a 50 ton first. The 20 ton will then leave and the 20 ton will get on the boat and go back to Timmouth. Yeah. The 50 ton will stay then overnight, take the counterweight off, and then Julian will come back the day after then with, with the Terra Mare and he will pick up the 70 ton excavator with the counterweight. Take it off. Yeah, the counterweight will go on the trailer and that'll get took back down to Timmouth and be reassembled down there. And then on Thursday, the last movement will be getting rid of the 50 ton excavator. So by Thursday, all of the plants should be gone from this area. Wow. Which is a big milestone for the job, really. Absolutely. Well, I've, I've, I've asked Julian to keep me, keep me up to date and um, you've kindly sent me the time, so yeah, I'll yeah. try and come down with a drone if the weather's good. So I think during a, a very severe winter storm, you're going to get some brilliant shots from up here. I think so, yeah. When, when the waves will hit the walls, on the, 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 especially the front walls. Yeah. Oh, well, this is going to be brilliant. So we've started regulating everything on the right-hand side. Everything's pretty much ready for final surfacing over that side. Yeah. Um, there's, there's not a lot left uh, to, to, to regulate over there prior to putting the granite sets down. Uh-huh. You can see where the guys have started to form the new plinths. Um, so the Form 1 plinth that runs up onto the bridge there, there's a gap in the middle that they've got to concrete at some point this week yeah. and they're starting to form the other plinth. That gets fenced the same as the fencing that goes around the edge of the basin. So there's all fencing to go over the top of there to prevent people from falling over the edge. Yeah. It's quite a small step at the moment. Okay. And then the shutter work that you can see on the right hand side of us down there going back onto Marine Parade, that's also to form a gradiented ramp going back up onto the, the top okay. of the bank water. Um, and that's also fenced as well. Yeah. Over the weekend, um, well, yesterday, well, today, yesterday, I don't know what day we're on now, to be honest <laughs> with you. We, the, the guys have started to install the, the shutter in for the steps. Yeah. So 
where the, where that big kind of block of concrete or the plinth is that you see on the right hand side, there'll be two steps that go up onto the top of there. That'll yeah. have granite sets on the top of it. Okay. Um, and then that acts as a bit of a seating area also. Yeah. For, for people to use. Okay. That's going to be lovely. Yeah. And we can't go down onto the ramp on the right hand side of Marine Parade because there's no lighting down there tonight because no. we're not working down there. Yeah. But we've started surfacing through there, so there's six out of nine of the surfacing bays completed in there now. So there's only three left to do. Yeah. The fencing that you can see on the right hand side has been installed oh, that's since gone our, out, last, yeah. oh, wow. our last tour. And that's the underpass down there. Yes. Wow. So yeah, it's, it's, it's mainly just surfacing work now and just unfortunately with surfacing we just dictated ma ma well, extreme amounts by the weather really. Yeah. So yeah. We can only do the granite sets when, when it's dry. It's, there's no point just even attempting to do it in the rain because no, no. it's just repeat work. We'll end up taking back out what we put in. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Especially, you know, you st we started to put in feathering kind of the ramps in different locations. Yeah, it's going to look before, amazing. There, there, was, there was steps in different locations in different areas, really. So you didn't really get an idea on, on no. the sort of height that we were working no. with. Well, as you walk through now. It's going to be great. The railings were up last time we came. Um, or they might have been installed. They were installed in them, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And we've started to install the lighting as well. Um, so the lighting's going up on the marine parade to continue the same oh, yeah. sort of lighting down the ramp on, yeah. on the wall. And the guys have started to install the new lighting that goes underneath the underpass as well. So you can right. see you can see here where we've been regulating through. This is the new sort of level. If you remember, it used to pond in the middle here. That's right, yeah. Um, ah, so, so this, this all, is all of the All of the drainage is designed to fall back down through the kind of gap where you can see the machine there. Yeah. And then it falls out of the edge of the stilling basin on the left-hand side. Okay. So it ramps down and then everything ramps to the left and then the, op the same but to the right on the yeah. opposite side. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's great. So we've got one more pour in here next week to yeah. regulate all this. And the, this is ready for, for final surfacing. You can see on the left-hand side where the new... Um, LED strips to start. Okay, to yeah. And then underneath here, in this groove, there'll be another LED strip. So it'll be quite light under here, to be honest yeah. with you. It used to be quite dark and dark and dingy underneath the, the old underpass. Yeah. And oh, you've got the lights uh, in on all sides, yeah. Yeah, yeah. On, they're on all, all sides of all spans. Okay. Um, but you won't get no pond underneath there. No, no. Yeah, that's, that's the best part of that. <laughs> yeah, <it>? absolutely. <laughs> well, it's uh, certainly coming together. We've again done so much work since the last visit. Yeah. I mean, thank, thanks for coming around at this time, to be no, honest. No, so, well, I'm, I'm normally up at this time, Jack, and um, <laughs> so uh, it was good to... I mean, I've been trying to get out to do some photography for a week, but we've barely seen the sun, so... Oh, no. We, we, we've experienced that like, with the granite sets, <laughs> yeah. to be honest with you. I bet it's been quite cold as well, most yeah. boys. It, we, we were finishing off the top of the eel ramp as well, and just because of the amount of rainfall that we've had... Yeah. It's, it, you're obviously getting a lot of water coming from upstream. Yeah. So when we've been trying to do work on the eel ramp, we've just had mass amounts of water to manage. Yeah. Which, nope. has, been, which has been extremely difficult. Well, okay. some of the days we just couldn't even do yeah. it, to be honest with you. We, we had to just make the decision to, to abort the works on the shift just yeah. because of how much water was coming down. Yeah. So um, one of my VIPs asked, said there was some cage or something you put in the other night. What, what was that? Yes, that was uh, at the top of the eel ramp. You, you can't see it now because it's no. obviously high tide. But at the top of the eel ramp, where it joins into... The, the slabs which are on the floor, which we've got the, the pockets in to, yeah. for the for the Couture marine growth and everything. There was a gap between the, the eel ramp and those units, yeah. and it couldn't be completed until you had the eel ramp in and the, the, the slabs at the top end, because right, okay. it basically ties all of the reinforcement together. Yeah. So we lifted the cage in and then cast the eel ramp to the the, 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 the rest of the surface and the slabs that are underneath there. Okay. So that was what we were doing. We, we did one half, and then we plan to do the other half on Monday. Okay, cool. So, so I'm kind of hoping it doesn't rain tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. There's that mass amounts of water coming down. Uh, there's actually some photos that I've got of, um, of us. We did a little bit of a diversion in there. We, we used a load, we used about 30 tonne of sand in sandbags just to divert, keep the water diverted yes. to one side. Yeah, okay. 
So I can, I can chuck you a couple of those. Right? Yeah, yeah, great. I'll, I'll stick them up for the VIPs. Brilliant. Right then, Jack, thank you so much for another interesting tour. And it's really good to do it first thing in the morning, even though we couldn't see everything. But it's still, uh, yeah, a real eye-opener. And you enjoy your holiday. It's well deserved. I will do. <laughs> no, thanks for coming around again. And uh, as always, if there's any questions, just pop them in the chat and I'll um, yeah. find to reply to them as quick as well, I can. Well, I'll, I'll do what I can while you're away. You enjoy your, your holiday and uh, we'll see you when you get back. Yeah, absolutely. Nice, no mate. Thanks again, mate.